In the last video, I um, told you about the Gram-Schmidt process. Remember that this was an algorithm for taking a, a set of uh, ordinary basis vectors and then transforming them into a set of orthonormal basis vectors. Um, maybe the description was a little abstract, so it helps to work a, a simple example. So let's start with two ordinary basis vectors, v1, v2. These are our uh, column vectors, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1. These are not orthogonal, right? If you do v1 transpose v2, you would have 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 would be 2, not 0. So these are not orthogonal vectors. They're not normalized either, right? So v1 transpose v1 is equal to 3, and v2 transpose v2 is equal to 2. So they're not orthogonal and they're not normalized. But they span a vector space. So this is a two-dimensional set, right? There are two vectors in the basis here. So the vector space is two-dimensional. But these vectors have three components. So reasonably, the full vector space is spanned by three vectors, right? An orthonormal basis would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. But this is only two vectors. So this spans a subspace of the three-dimensional vector space. Spans only a two-dimensional vector space. But the vectors are not orthonormal. So we can use the Gram-Schmidt process here to construct two orthonormal vectors. So how do we do that? Remember, we take our first vector, u1. We just set it equal to v1, right? Which is just our 1, 1, 1 vector. OK, so we start with u1. And then later, we can normalize this so it has unit length. Then we want to construct u2. So u2 is going to be v2. But we need to subtract from v2 the piece of u1, uh, the piece of u2 that is along u1. So we want to subtract here the piece of v2 that is along u1. So we have u1 transpose v2. And this is supposed to be along u1. And then we divide through by u, the, uh, u1 transpose u1, or the norm squared of u1. OK? And then this vector now is supposed to be orthogonal to u1. What is this vector? This vector is v2, right? So it's our 0, 1, 1 vector. And from there, we're subtracting off the piece that is along u1. So u1 transpose v2, I can write that down. u1 transpose is 1, 1, 1 as a row vector times v2, which is 0, 1, 1, a column vector. So that's a scalar, right? u1 transpose v2, that's just a number, times u1 which is 1, 1, 1, which is a vector, divided by uh, the length of u1, which is 1, 1, 1, the length of u1 squared, times 1, 1, 1, so the row vector times the column vector. OK, so that's exactly what it is. Um, we can do this. So this is 0, 1, 1. And then we're subtracting. This is a number divided by a number. This is 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. So this is the number 2. This in the denominator is the number 3. 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. So this is minus 2 thirds. 
times the vector u1, which is 1, 1, 1. Okay? So we're subtracting from the uh, v2 the piece that is uh, along v1, which works out to be 2 thirds, 1, 1, 1. And then we get 0 minus 2 thirds, so minus 2 thirds. 1 minus 2 thirds, 1 third. And 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. OK? So this is just equal to 1 third times uh, minus 2, 1, 1. OK? Uh, U1 and U2 are orthogonal, right? Uh, this one-third is a constant, doesn't really matter. So uh, u1 transpose times u2, if we forget about the one-third, is minus 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 0. So now u2 is orthogonal to u1. Um, and we can normalize. So now finally we normalize. So our u1 hat becomes 1, 1, 1, and then we divide through by uh, the norm of 1, 1, 1, which is uh, w this vector transpose times itself is uh, 3, right? And then uh, we take the square root, so 1 over root 3. So the normalization is 1 over root 3 times 1, 1, 1. And the second vector normalized. Uh, we don't have to worry about the one-third. That's just another constant. So we can just take this vector minus 2, 1, 1. If we take the transpose with itself, the dot product, we get 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, 5, 6. We take the square root. So we have 1 over root 6 times minus 2, 1. One, okay. So that's our orthonormal basis. This basis v1 and v2 span the same vector space as this basis u1 hat and u2 hat. Okay. You can see basically the defining feature of this vector space is that the second component is always equal to the third component of the vector, right? You multiply the first vector by a constant, add it to the second vector. Always the second component equals the third component. Here, always the second component equals the third component in the same way. But now we've adjusted the first component so that these two vectors are orthogonal, and then we've normalized them. Okay, that's basically what we've done here. So in some sense, you could have looked at this and guessed the answer. Okay, so this is the Gram-Schmidt process. Um, you can do this for n vectors. You just keep continuing the algorithm. And in the n state, you can always construct a set of orthonormal vectors from a given uh, set of uh, ordinary basis vectors. It would be very useful for theoretical purposes. And then it's uh, in a lot of applications, you would like your vectors to be orthonormal. Remember that the uh, orthogonal matrix is composed of columns of orthonormal vectors. So some, we're going to be constructing orthogonal matrices. And so it's very useful to have these orthonormal vectors. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.